Have you ever had a moment when you feel you've done something you feel is special for your family or specifically for your teenager? Maybe it was a special meal or buying an item that your teen had been in need of for a while and in your mind, you picture this moment of excitement, a big hug, a grateful thank you, but instead you get this quick look, a grunt, uh, barely acknowledging your effort, and it can be frustrating and often downright infuriating. I wonder if this is how God feels when we blow off worship or treat worship as an afterthought. You see, at its heart, worship is about showing gratitude for all that God has done in our lives. But gratitude isn't always our first response. If you're anything like me, gratitude is something that you have to practice, and it's no different for our youth. So how can we help our teens to develop a grateful heart? Here are a few quick points to help you understand your teen, the culture they're surrounded by, and also some steps to take to develop gratefulness together. Teenagers, as we all know, are changing in every way, uh, mentally, emotionally, socially, and of course, spiritually. And while all of these changes are happening, they are surrounded day in and day out by an Instagram photo perfect world. This world is not reality, but rather freeze frame moments of only the best of everyone's lives. Add to that commercials and advertisements, TV shows and celebrities giving them a perspective that everyone just has not only what they need, but magically what they want as well. As parents, we need to take a few simple steps to help our teens develop a godly biblical understanding of blessings and thankful gratitude. Step one, the response, not the reaction. Instead of reacting emotionally to your teen through your own hurt feelings, instead, respond to them. Stop what's going on and have your own real life freeze frame with your teen. Calmly ask your team to stop as well and ask them what just happened. Work to make them positively self-aware of the situation and their own lack of gratitude. Talk about their response and help them to process both socially and spiritually. Step two, start a conversation, not a lecture. Choose to begin an ongoing conversation about God's blessings and provision instead of making a momentary lecture. More than just a one-time, one-sided lecture where you talk to your team. Make your home a place of continual back and forth conversation about what your family has been blessed with without negative comparison to others. Step three, teach gratitude instead of fighting for a thank you. Live and speak the example of gratitude rather than demanding a personal thank you. If you expect your teen to be grateful and thankful, you need to model that for them. Often, you're thinking about the price you paid or the hours that you work to provide for your family when you demand to see and hear gratitude. This attitude is just as wrong as the ungratefulness of your child. Your children need to see a godly, humble attitude of stewardship of your schedule, abilities, and money. What you have and give them is not yours, but rather what God has entrusted to you. You share those things with them and others without selfish intention or the need for a personal thank you. Developing gratefulness in your home, your teens, and yourself comes down to godly responses, conversations, and attitudes. The next time you sit down to worship, Try to worship out of a place of gratitude for all that God has already done and is doing in your life and the life of your family. As the saying goes, practice an attitude of gratitude, and you may be surprised at the change in everyone's hearts and worship.